You're in a conversation and someone says, we have to respect the rights of children. No one, not even their parents, should be allowed to interfere with their sexual autonomy. We have to let them decide who they really are. What would you say? Children's rights are absolutely crucial, but does that mean parents shouldn't be able to direct their children's education and medical care or be informed about the choices they're making? Another way to ask this is, do we have to choose between the rights of parents or the rights of children? No. The next time you're in a conversation and someone says that children's rights conflict with parental rights, here are three things to remember. Number one, children have rights, but they're frequently misunderstood. Many people have only heard the term children's rights misused. It's no wonder when top tier UN agencies, including UNICEF and the WHO and UNAIDS use the phrase to primarily promote the sexual rights of children. For example, some professionals argue that children have a right to harmful transgender treatments even if their parents don't agree. Some school districts hide a child's transgender identity from their parents based on the very wobbly right to privacy. But just because the term children's rights has been misused doesn't negate the reality that children have natural rights. Natural rights spring from our nature as human beings, what we need as a human person and what we owe other humans, which can be called justice. Natural rights exist independent of custom or legal convention. When we apply that natural law framework, we see that indeed, children have rights. Number two, children have rights, including the right to life and the right to their mother and father. Children's primary natural rights are first, their right to life, and second, their right to their own mother and father. Despite the fact that these natural rights are addressed in the most widely ratified treaty in the world, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, confusion persists. So, when seeking to distinguish between genuine natural rights and, I want it so bad, how is this not a right? It's helpful to apply the three rules that confirm a right test to determine whether this right shares the three qualities to which all rights conform. First, a natural right is pre-government. It doesn't exist because of legislative or judicial decree. Rather, the government exists to protect that natural right. Second, no one has to provide a natural right. If someone has to bottle, package, ship, and stock it, it's not a natural right. Third, a natural right is distributed equally. If the quantity, size, or degree can vary, a dorm room versus Mar-a-Lago, for example, it's not a natural right. Children's right to life clearly passes the three rules that confirm a right test. In fact, it passes with flying colors. Life existed pre-government. Life needs to be protected but not provided. And we all get the same allocation of life, just one. A child's right to her mother and father also passes the three rules that confirm a right test. It existed pre-government, whether you're on Team Adam and Eve or Team Homo erectus, children's right to their parents are as pre as it comes. No one has to provide parents to a child. If a child exists, their mother and father also exist. And everyone gets the same amount of parents. Exactly two. Number three, children have rights and they don't conflict with parental rights. In natural law theory, rights correspond to duties and obligations. Parents have a natural moral duty or obligation to care for the children that they create. Because caring for children requires making decisions on their behalf, even at times when they disagree, parental authority flows from parental obligations. Parental rights protect that authority, enabling parents to fulfill their obligations in line with the dictates of their consciences. Those obligations have implications for the rights of children as well. As parental rights expert Melissa Michella explains, these obligations on the part of parents correlate to children's absolute right to be raised by their biological parents. Think of it this way. We all understand parents have a right to take their own newborn home from the hospital. Parents don't want just any baby. They want their baby. 
and parents don't have a right to just any baby, only their own. There's something distinct about the intimate, biological connection between the parents and that child. Well, guess what? That special, intimate, biological connection matters to the baby as well. The baby shouldn't go home from the hospital with just any adults. She has a right to go home with her own mom and dad. Children's rights and parental rights are two sides of the same natural law coin. Thus, true children's rights and parental rights don't contradict one another, but reinforce one another. So the next time you're talking about family and someone says, children have a right to be free of their parents' authority, remember these three things. Number one, children have rights, but they're frequently misunderstood. Number two, children have rights, including the right to life and the right to their mother and father. Number three, children have rights, and they don't conflict with parental rights. For What Would You Say? I'm Katie Faust.